Hello class, you know what time it is. It's time to practice. This is American English File, second edition, book two, workbook, part 9A. What would you do? Okay, it's pedal to the metal. Grammar, if plus past, would plus the base form, the second conditional. Do you remember? I have two exercises for you. A match the sentence beginnings and endings for example number one if my sister were older f she could go to the party with me right something imaginary hypothetical right very good exercise b order the words to complete the sentences and questions so you have to order for example number one look if I had a car, I would drive it to work. Okay. Stop the video, take your time, and do it yourself. Very good. Now check your answers with your friends and partners. Let's do it together. Number two, my parents would buy a bigger house. E, if they had more money. Number three, he'd go sailing. A, if he could swim number four what would people do c if they couldn't watch tv number five if you saw that horror movie b you'd be really scared and number six i'd go for a walk d if it wasn't raining so far so good exercise b number two what would you do if you found a million dollars? Number three, he would buy a phone if he could afford one. Number four, if someone gave me caviar, I wouldn't eat it. Number five, what would you say if you could talk to the president? And the last one, I'd look for a new job if I were you. Well done, you did great, but follow me. I have another exercise for you, but we're going to do this one together. Complete the second conditional sentences with the correct form of the verbs in the parentheses. All right. Number one, if a bee flew into my bedroom, I would open the window. All right. Number two, if my sister saw a mouse in the kitchen, she would scream. Number three. We wouldn't have a dog if we didn't have a yard. Number four. If my brother wasn't allergic to animals, he would get a cat. Number five. If I lived in the country, I would learn to ride a horse. And the last one. What would you do if a dangerous dog attacked you? Well done. You got it all right. Exercise two. Vocabulary animals everyone complete the crosswords do it very good now let's check it together number two cow number six across jellyfish number seven across whale number nine across bear number ten across snake now clues down Number one is done. Monkey. Number three, spider. Number four, bee. Number five, sheep. And the last one, horse. Very good. Part three, pronunciation. Word stress. Underline the stressed syllables. For example, butterfly. Bu butterfly, right? Very good. Now, listen and check. Let's do it together. File 9A, pronunciation B. One, butterfly. Two, camel. Three, chicken. Four, crocodile. Five, Dolphin. Six. Elephant. 
Seven, giraffe. Eight, jellyfish. Nine, lion. Ten, monkey. Eleven, mosquito. Twelve, rabbit. Thirteen, spider. Fourteen, tiger. That's all there is to it. Part four, reading. Crocodile attack. If you were swimming at the edge of the water in southern Florida in the U.S., United States, and you saw a crocodile coming toward you, what would you do? Okay, everybody, now check your possible answer. I'd run away fast. I'd try to open its mouth. I'd make a loud noise. I'd pretend to be dead. I would put my fingers in its eyes. I would try to fight it. Which one? All right, keep your answers to yourself. We're going to figure it out. Part B. Now read the rest of the article. Circle the sentence that is the best summary. All right, we have one, two, and three. Take your time and read it. This is your turn. A few moments later. Okay, you're back. So let's see what we should do if a crocodile attacks us. Well, most of these are possible. The best thing to do depends on where the crocodile is at the time. If it comes toward you on land, experts say that you should turn around and run away as fast as possible. Crocodiles can run faster than humans over a short distance, but they soon get tired. If they miss their first chance to catch their victim, they usually start looking for something else. Mm -hmm. If you're in the water, then splash around to make a noise so that the animal gets confused. If this doesn't work, push your thumb or fingers into the crocodile's eye. This is the most sensitive area of the crocodile's body. And it is the place where you can cause the animal the most pain. It will also be very surprised by your attack and it's possible that it will decide to leave you alone. Don't try to open the crocodile's mouth because the muscles are so strong that this is almost impossible. Hmm. However, if the crocodile is in a bad mood, it's possible that it will continue fighting. Your final opportunity is to pretend to be dead. If the crocodile thinks that its victim is dead, it opens its mouth for a few seconds to move the body into its throat. This can give you your last chance to escape. But it's a very dangerous plan. Alright? Our final advice? It's much better to avoid crocodiles than to do any of the things above. So which one is the best summary? There are a lot of things you can do if a crocodile attacks you. Alright? Now, there are some highlighted words or phrases. Check them in your dictionary or in your Google Translate and tell them to your partner. Well done. Part 5, listening. And this is the last set for today's practice. Listen to a news story about a shark attack. How did the man survive? Right. Listen and answer the question. Okay. File 9A, listening. And our final story on tonight's program is about an Australian diver who has survived a shark attack. 46-year-old Eric Nurhus was fishing off the coast of Cape Howe, New South Wales, when a great white shark attacked him. He was under the water at the time, and he didn't see the animal swimming towards him. Mr. Nurhus's head, shoulders, and one of his arms ended up in the shark's mouth. But, fortunately, he was wearing a heavy metal vest. When the shark tried to bite the man in half, its teeth hit the vest and not his body. Mr. Nurhus knew he had to do something, so he felt for the shark's eye with the hand of his other arm. When he found it, 
He surprised the animal by pressing his fingers into its eye. The shark reacted by opening its mouth, giving Mr. Nurhus a chance to escape. Despite his injuries, Eric managed to swim up to the surface of the water. His son pulled him onto his boat and took him quickly to the shore. Meanwhile, another friend called emergency services. Mr. Nurhus was flown to a hospital by helicopter. He had deep cuts all over his body and a broken nose, but he was very lucky to be alive. Attacks by great white sharks usually result in death because of their size and strength. The shark that attacked Mr. Nurhus was over nine feet long. Wow. Okay, that was one lucky man. Now, how did the man survive? What is the answer? Okay. By pressing his fingers into the shark's eyes. Well done. Now, you're going to listen again and answer the questions. We have eight questions. Are you ready? Okay, go. File 9A, listening. And our final story on tonight's program is about an Australian diver who has survived a shark attack. 46-year-old Eric Nurhus was fishing off the coast of Cape Howe, New South Wales, when a great white shark attacked him. He was under the water at the time, and he didn't see the animal swimming towards him. Mr. Nurhus's head, shoulders, and one of his arms ended up in the shark's mouth. But, fortunately, he was wearing a heavy metal vest. When the shark tried to bite the man in half, its teeth hit the vest and not his body. Mr. Nurhus knew he had to do something, so he felt for the shark's eye with the hand of his other arm. When he found it, he surprised the animal by pressing his fingers into its eye. The shark reacted by opening its mouth, giving Mr. Nurhus a chance to escape. Despite his injuries, Eric managed to swim up to the surface of the water. His son pulled him onto his boat and took him quickly to the shore. Meanwhile, another friend called emergency services. Mr. Nurhus was flown to a hospital by helicopter. He had deep cuts all over his body and a broken nose, but he was very lucky to be alive. Attacks by great white sharks usually result in death because of their size and strength. The shark that attacked Mr. Nurhus was over nine feet long. All right, very good. Check your answers with your friends. Mm -hmm. So number one, where is Eric Nurhus from? Australia. Number two, what was he doing when the shark attacked? Fishing. Number three, which parts of his body were in the shark's mouth? His head, shoulders, and one of his arms, right? Number four, what was Eric's vest made of? Metal. Who rescued Eric? His son. Number six, how did Eric get to the hospital? By helicopter. Number seven, what injuries did he have? He had deep cuts all over his body and a broken nose. And number eight, how big was the shark? Over nine feet long. That was a very big shark. Dangerous, of course. Well done. Now we have some words for you. Pockets, pockets, backward, backward, bite, bite, float, float, shout, shout, sting, sting, suck, suck, tie, tie, wave. Babe, keep still, keep still. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you have a question, please ask me immediately. Wish you all the best. And remember, only you can make a difference. Be the one. Bye-bye.